Are you interested in improving your own immunity and improving the immune systems of those that you love? If you're asking those questions, you're a lot like people asking me, even of late, what they can do to enhance their immune system. I'm Dr. David DeRose. I'm a physician, a board certified specialist in both internal medicine and preventive medicine. And I want to talk with you today about what I'm calling beyond immune enhancement, beyond immune enhancement. The reason that I'm framing the presentation this way is because we want to talk about what you can do to improve immunity, but we want to talk also about some things that many are not telling us that can make a big difference, especially if you're concerned about COVID-19. Before I get into the material that I've prepared for you, I want to let you know in this presentation, I'm going to be sharing with you some free resources. I'll be telling you how you can get one of my free books, uh, absolutely free. It's a book that will make a difference because it deals with the very subject of infectious diseases and immunity. I'll tell you more about it in a few minutes. I'm also going to offer you free of charge a extensive handout that looks at specific strategies that can help your immune system. And finally, along with my free resources, I'm going to be sharing with you an absolutely free lifestyle change program. I've worked in some of the best lifestyle change facilities. You might call them medical spas here in the United States and in Europe. And I've put together a 30-day program, about five minutes a day, free YouTube videos. You'll find out how you can take advantage of those as we go along our presentation today. So a lot of free materials that I'm going to put in your hands, but more than anything, I want to give you some practical tools that can help you improve your immune system and thrive even in these challenging times. With that in mind, I want to begin by framing things perhaps a little bit differently than they've been framed lately. Remember, I'm calling this beyond immune enhancement. Why beyond immune enhancement? We're going to be talking about your immune system, simple, practical things that you can do. I'm not going to be selling you any supplements, anything like that. I just want to give you some practical things that you can do to improve your immune system. But we've got to go beyond that. Because if you're concerned about COVID-19, and if you've been keeping up with the medical literature or reports based on it, you realize that many of the casualties of COVID-19, many of the complications are due to circulatory problems. COVID-19 is affecting optimal blood fluidity. That's right. People with severe disease, they tend to have problems that impair blood flow. This is why we're seeing an increased risk of things like strokes and heart attacks, even kidney failure. So beyond immune enhancement, this presentation is going to look at things that can improve your circulatory system as well. We'll find that some of the very same things that can improve your immune system can also improve your circulation. You say, well, who am I to be speaking about this? Sure, I'm a MD. I've got a master's in public health degree. But hey, there's a whole lot of people who've got those credentials that are out there saying things that are really conflicting. I want to tell you two of the reasons why I think I'm especially equipped to share this material. First of all, I'm a best-selling author. I've written two books that deal with subjects that interface directly with this topic. These two books, typically in the top 100 best-selling preventive medicine books on Kindle, on Amazon's platform, one of them consistently among the top 10 books in its category. That book I'm talking about is something called 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control. 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control. I'm going to actually be going through some practical pointers because these same keys, uh, I don't know if you see the subtitle there, the no pressure solution. We're going to use that mnemonic to give you 10 practical strategies to improve your immune system and decrease your risk of circulatory health issues, whether you have COVID-19 or not. The other reason is the other book that I'm referring to is called The Methuselah Factor. It is my most recent book, and The Methuselah Factor is dealing with blood fluidity. So I look in this book comprehensively at things that can decrease your risk of stroke and heart attack, that can decrease your risk of diabetic complications, that can help you perform better physically. So I'm going to be gleaning from these two books 10 practical strategies that can help your immune system, that's right, can help your immune system, and can also decrease your risk 
of some of the problems that are occurring in the context of COVID-19. So with that in mind, let's talk about no pressure. No pressure is the mnemonic that I and my two co-authors, Dr. Greg Steinke and nurse practitioner Trudy Lee, use in our best-selling book, 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control. What does no pressure stand for? No pressure stands for simple strategies that can make a difference. We're going to find it can make a difference in your immune system as well as your blood pressure. We could just as well talk about how it could help your diabetes, how it can help you lose weight. But what does no pressure stand for? The N stands for nutrition. The O for optimal choice of beverages. P is for physical activity. R is for rest. E for environment. S for stress management. The second S is for social support. U is for the use of natural adjuncts. R is for refraining from pressors and excesses. And E is for exercising faith. We're going to talk about all of these 10 strategies in brief overview fashion because I'm going to let you know, like I said, about other resources that you can get free of charge that can help you along this journey. So let's dive in. I know it may seem logical to start right at the top, but here's what I found. Many people, when I start speaking about nutrition and uh, optimal choice of beverages, they say, I know all that stuff. I've already got my mind made up. We will address those things before we finish, but let's start first with physical activity. Physical activity is so important when it comes to optimizing your immune system. This is the perfect time to tell you about one of the free resources, the first of the three free resources I've got for you. It is a free book. It is my book, Evading Ebola. Now, a lot of folks say evading Ebola, but we're not concerned about Ebola. We're concerned about COVID-19. Evading Ebola is a book that before most people were talking about it, I was telling people about inapparent infections. That's right, inapparent infections, these asymptomatic illnesses. Did you know it's not just with COVID-19? It's not just with influenza. It was true with Ebola. Strong medical evidence when I put together this book showing what? Showing that many people had had Ebola infection. They showed immune responses in their blood, but they never got clinically ill. So the thesis behind this book was what can you do to improve your immune system to help address Ebola? Many of these same strategies can help you with COVID-19. At least that's what the data suggests to this physician's eyes. In this book, Evading Ebola. And it's how do you get it free? Let me just tell you. You just go to my website, compasshealth.net slash Ebola. Compasshealth.net slash Ebola, and you can get a free copy right there. If you don't want to go to my website, you can buy a copy of the book on Amazon, okay? I think right now the only place we're offering the ebook, it's not on Kindle, I don't believe, at the present time. We're only offering it through compasshealth.net. But if you want a physical copy, yes, that's right. It is still sold on Amazon. So evading Ebola. Compasshealth.net slash Ebola. You can get a copy of the book. It's a pretty quick read. Uh, What have we got in here? Uh, Less than 100 pages. And it's going to walk you through many of these natural strategies. Exercise. Why is it so important? Exercise helps to optimize your immune system. It's been shown in numerous studies. If you want to optimize your immune system, be physically active. Now, a lot of folks tell me, I hate exercise. I don't want to do anything. Here's the best strategy I can give you, because this video is focused on practical strategies. Do something. Start with even five minutes a day. Even if it's, well, start with a minute a day. If it's just walking out to your mailbox. Yes, if it's icy out, put some um, stable icers on or something to give you some some grip as you go out to your mailbox, okay? But my point is, do it safely, but do something physically active. I recommend doing it every day and start with something. Even if it's just five minutes, get into the habit of exercise being a part of your daily routine. Now, here's where I'm going to tell you about the second free resource I've got for you. It is this free lifestyle program. And you can also get it by going to my website, compasshealth.net. This time you're wanting to go to the resource section and under help for high blood pressure. I'll also put a link along with this video where you can link directly to a playlist. That's right, a playlist that is designed to walk you through a 30-day program. What I do 
simple installments, about five minutes a day, I tell you practical things you can do. Some of those things early on are about exercise. We'll talk about isometric exercise, things you can do in your chair if you don't want to go outside in the cold, okay? But we'll talk more about the benefits of getting outside in a few minutes. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is be physically active. Start doing something, and a lot of strategies in my free video series, other practical suggestions in the book Evading Ebola, those are yours free. Let's go down the list. No pressure. The R stands for rest. Rest, extremely important. You've been hearing a lot of people talk about the importance of getting adequate sleep. I'm challenged with this many times. I know many of you might be. I'm doing telemedicine right now. A lot of doctors, of course, great demands on telemedicine services. For many years, I worked uh, in a physical clinic location and uh, seeing patients there. Right now, I've kind of scaled down my clinical work, but such demand for telemedicine. So I'm working with that same clinic where I worked for a number of years, seeing some of the same patients I've worked with over the years. And what am I doing? These virtual visits. I know that may not sound glamorous. I'm not on the front lines. That's right. And my hat's off to those of my colleagues who are. But telemedicine services, I'm actually in the Eastern time zone. I'm rendering them on the West Coast because that's where I practice for many years. So you say, well, what does that have to do with rest? The problem is that if you're working into the evening on the West Coast, that's getting pretty late on the East Coast. Now, pretty late is a relative term, but here's where I'm going with all this. The medical research suggests if you want to get the optimum benefit from your sleep, get to bed early. 10 o'clock seems to be a magic number. If you can get to bed by 10 o'clock, it's going to optimize the output of things like growth hormone and melatonin. And I'll tell you about melatonin because the research is indicating that melatonin may have special benefits for the immune system as well as for sleep. We talk about melatonin in some detail in our book, 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control. Let me give you one key concept there. Blood pressure lowering effects from melatonin as well but you want to use a continuous release or a slow release melatonin preparation. Get your rest. On my website, compasshealth.net, a free handout on common strategies to help you sleep. We call it sleep hygiene. It's the most extensive table in our book, our blood pressure book. It's free to you. Just go to our free resource section on my compasshealth.net webpage. Let's move on. We've talked about physical activity. We've talked about rest. What does the E stand for? E stands for environment. Environment is so important when it comes to optimal immune system, optimal circulation. Let's look at it this way. One of the things that undermines your immune system are stress hormones. If you disrupt your sleep, if you're not getting adequate sleep, the way you function the next day is by ramping up stress hormones. You can do that by having a cup of coffee. And I'm not saying you can't do that, but it does raise stress hormones. It raises blood pressure. It makes the blood more likely to clot. It makes the blood less fluid. So here's my point. Higher stress hormone levels also have immune dampening effects. They impair immunity. So you want to avoid things that raise stress hormone levels. You want to avoid things that interfere with your sleep. You want to avoid things in the context of what we're talking about, blood fluidity that adversely impact that. When it comes to environment, one of the things we often don't think about is noise. Noise exposure is deleterious to optimal circulatory function. I talk about this in some detail, or at least give you some good, solid information about it in both of my books, The Methuselah Factor and 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control. What can you do to optimize your environment? If you're in a noisy area, if you can move your bedroom to the side of your home or apartment away from the busiest street, that has actually been shown to have circulatory benefits, including lowering blood pressure. Say, hey, I'm in a one-bedroom apartment. I'm on a busy street. What can I do? Put a pair of earplugs in your ears. That's right. That can make a difference. Let me tell you something else about environment. And uh, you can read more about it in the book uh, Evading Ebola. It's in both of my other books. It's so important. And you've been hearing a huge amount about it lately. It has to do with vitamin D. 
vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin, this vitamin hormone, very, very, very important. I just saw another medical article and it was saying something like, uh, doctors don't let any patient with COVID-19 be low in vitamin D. Don't let it happen. Make sure that you're giving significant amounts of vitamin D, especially in people with low vitamin D levels. General rule of thumb that I use in my clinical practice is 5,000 international units a day. If you don't know what your vitamin D status is, that's generally a safe place to start. But I do like people to have their vitamin D levels checked. Then your doctor can tailor it to your own individual needs. 5,000 international units a day, though, seems to be safe for the vast majority of people. In fact, I know of no cases where anyone has gotten toxic taking that amount of vitamin D daily. Typically in the literature, it takes 10,000 international units or more consistently. And even with that amount, many people uh, do not get toxic. You can get too much vitamin D, but a large range of safety. You should be getting vitamin D, whether you're in a warmer uh, more equatorial uh, part of the United States. You say nothing's equatorial, but you know I'm talking about southern states, Texas, you know Florida, Southern California. Yes, you can get vitamin D from the sunshine year-round there. But even people in sunnier climates, especially those with darker pigment, hey, those of you that have darker complexions, you are blessed. You're going to have less skin cancers. You're going to have less wrinkling of your skin, but you have a harder time making vitamin D. So a number of reasons why vitamin D can be impaired and vitamin D supplementation can be beneficial. Let's move on. We've been talking about simple things that we can do, things like physical activity, rest, environment. Let's talk about stress management. I've already alluded to, uh, to stress and how that adversely affects our immune system, affects our metabolism. That's right. As stress hormones go up, your blood sugar goes up, your blood pressure tends to go up, and all of this is pro-inflammatory. It's making inflammation worse, is it? Well, actually, interesting. The immediate effects of stress hormones are anti-inflammatory. That's why we give cortisone shots. But under these prolonged effects of higher blood sugars and higher blood pressures, they have deleterious effects on the system. So here's the bottom line. Even if that cortisone shot was great for your knee, it was not great likely for your blood sugar or your blood pressure. Try to keep your stress hormone levels as low as possible. The way you do that is with practical stress management strategies. And uh, I walk you through those in my free 30-day lifestyle program. Every seventh day of the program, you may have heard that seven-day cycle before, you know, the weekly cycle. We focus on things that uh, are designed to build up your stress resolve, if you will, to help your resiliency. Let me tell you, as we're talking about those free resources, I'm going to tell you about a handout, one other free resource that you can get, and it has an underlying core of stress management strategies. You say, give me something practical. What can I do for stress management? Let me make it real simple. Wind down before you go to bed at night. Wind down. Don't just watch stressful news reports. Don't balance your checkbook. Don't you know, watch that sports team that already oh, that always loses and then try to go to bed. Try to give some space before going to bed and whatever you've been doing. Maybe you're going to take a shower. Maybe you're going to listen to some relaxing music. Maybe you're going to do a relaxing hobby, do something, some inspirational reading. Try to have your mind at ease. This will help your sleep quality and your stress. What about the second S in the no pressure mnemonic? We're not wanting to stress you out with this program. We want to give you practical things you can do. The second S is for social support. Now, this has been strained during this pandemic. Why? All this, quote, social distancing. I know a lot of people are saying we'd be better to say physical distancing because we want to be socially connected with people. Here's a, a simple thing you can do. Tell someone else to watch this video and then discuss it with them. You say, I don't really like this video all that much. Why would I tell them that? Well, then pick a video that you like. Do something together with someone, uh, even if it's not simultaneous, and then share that. Communicate with them. Jump online. You know, do FaceTime. Whatever it might be. Get on the phone. You got my message. 
Very important. Connect with other people socially. No more powerful thing that you can do is to go on a lifestyle program together. That's why I recommend if you're going to go on my free 30-day program, see the link below or go to my website and look under the section Help for High Blood Pressure. You'll see it right under a picture of my 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control book. You'll see links to the YouTube videos for a 30-day program. We call it 30 Days to Natural Diabetes and High Blood Pressure Control. But the principles are good for anyone. Hey, tell you the truth. They're the same principles, the same 30-day program that I have in my book, The Methuselah Factor. So if you don't want to buy the book and you want to get these practical 30 principles, daily principles, just watch my free videos. 30 Days to Natural Diabetes and High Blood Pressure Control. Or you can go to my YouTube page, which is called Compass Health Consulting. Compass Health Consulting. But I'm telling you this because if you do one of those programs, share it with someone else. Say, let's go on this program together. Even if they're across the country, even if they're out of the country, say, let's do this 30-day program together. Compare notes maybe once a week. I know people that have done this in community groups. It makes a difference, social connectedness. You say, okay, well, where are we going from there? What's next on our list? We've been walking through this no pressure program. We originally devised it to deal with high blood pressure, but right now we're going through it. Why? We're going through it because it can also help you deal with optimizing your immune system. In fact, going beyond immune enhancement and improving your circulatory health, which is one of the places where people tend to fall when it comes to COVID-19. So next we want to talk about use of natural adjuncts. What are natural things you can do that can improve your health, improve your immune system? Well, you've already gathered two of the things that you could do supplement-wise, vitamin D and melatonin. But there are other supplements that are rising to the top, at least suggesting you know, pretty significant benefits in the, the context of infectious diseases and even specifically enhancing the immune system, especially with respect to COVID-19. One that's very promising is zinc. And uh, I'm just going to mention another resource. Some people ask me, have I done a lot of videos on COVID-19? No. But one person, probably my go-to person, if you just want me to be honest with you, online for COVID-19 information is Dr. Roger Schwelt. Uh, Dr. Schwelt with MedCram, great resource if you're not familiar with that. And uh, I believe it's update 59 of his. Check it out on MedCram.com. Uh, he goes through comprehensively a number of supplements, things that you can do. Uh, zinc is on his list. I typically recommend for people who are supplementing with zinc, 25 milligrams a day. Uh, initially, you can start with 50, but I recommend if you're using it long term, no more than 25 milligrams. We got a whole chapter in our book, 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control. It's chapter 12 on things that you can do to improve your blood pressure with natural adjuncts. That's right, use of natural adjuncts, natural compounds, whether it's hibiscus tea, whether it's uh, coenzyme Q10, whether it's L-tryptophan. We go through all the research there. Feel free to uh, just go on Amazon and browse through the book. Go to chapter 12 and take a peek uh, at some of that information. Maybe can uh, even save you picking up a copy of the book. But a lot of great information there. And my point is, remember, if you haven't heard this already, and if I haven't made it clear, if you want to avoid COVID-19 and its ravages, the evidence suggests you want to be concerned about things like high blood pressure and diabetes and carrying extra weight. That's why I'm talking with you about a comprehensive program that can help not only your immune system, but can help your circulatory health and can help some of these comorbidities that seem to increase the ravages of COVID-19. Let's move on to R, refraining from pressors and excesses. A lot of people say, what are you talking about? Refraining from pressors and excesses. Pressors are things that raise blood pressure. And I want to talk about one of them. We could just as well talk about this under the beverage section, but I'll mention it right now. It's alcohol. Alcohol is an immune suppressant. Alcohol raises blood pressure. Alcohol, beverage alcohol, promotes weight gain. If you're really serious about optimal immune status, you would totally avoid alcohol. Now, some people are saying, you're crazy. It's one of the things that's helping me get by during this pandemic. I'm just telling you, straight up, this is important. And if alcohol you think is helping you get through the pandemic, I will tell you, 
I have seen people, because of the pandemic, relying on more alcohol, and I have seen complications, including devastating complications from excessive amounts of alcohol in the context of the pandemic. Okay? I'm not saying every one of you has got to throw out all your alcohol. Uh, I do think, from a comprehensive health standpoint, that's the best. But I'm talking about 10 strategies. You figure out which ones are going to work for you. Whatever you do, don't look at alcohol as something that's a, a good strategy for stress management. It is likely to end up biting you in the hand, if not somewhere else. Let's go now to nutrition and optimal choice of beverages before we go to exercising faith, and that's what we'll close on. When it comes to nutrition, I know, folks, as I've written about nutrition and spoken about it, done seminars on it, video series on nutrition, I know folks have their minds made up. Some of you say, hey, if you tell me this, I'm going to say that's wrong because uh, I'm following this program and it's working for me. Lay your prejudices aside for just a minute. And I want to tell you, if you look at immune enhancement, if you look at decreasing inflammation, if you look at optimizing circulatory health, you have to focus on eating more plant foods. Now, some people hear that and they say, I'm not becoming a vegetarian. I'm not going to be a vegan. I did not say that, okay? I did not tell you how to do that. I said eating more plant foods. Someone else says, no, this is ridiculous. I'm on a keto program. Are you aware that you can even be on a keto program and eat more plant foods? Vegetables tend to be low in carbohydrates, especially your leaf, stem, and flower vegetables. That's right. Things like asparagus, things like broccoli, things like cauliflower, lettuce, kale. You get my point. Those things, very low in carbohydrate. They don't tend to raise blood sugar. And in fact, when I wrote my book, The Methuselah Factor, when I was writing this book, I said, people need to be eating more of these vegetables, okay? And we actually recommend this leaf, stem, and flower fast. It's a modified fast. We talk about the benefits of it in this series you'll find those same principles are in my free video series online. Remember, it's called 30 Days to Natural Diabetes and High Blood Pressure Control. They're principles that will help boost your immune system as well. So more information you want to do on a daily basis, check out those videos. You can access them by the link that goes along with this video. So what are we talking about when it comes to nutrition? Eat more plant foods. I don't care what that looks like. Cut back on the milk, the meat, the eggs, the cheese. Add more of those plant foods into your diet, and that will tend to improve your immune system and improve your circulatory health. What about beverages? You've already heard that uh, there's two beverages that are really not your friends when it comes to your circulation, your immune system, your blood pressure, your diabetes. That's right. Alcoholic beverages and caffeinated beverages, not your friends. Just being frank with you. By the way, stuff with artificial sweeteners is not the way to go either. What am I recommending? Well, I'll play my hand here. You say, what is that? Is it actually water? You say, it doesn't look like water. What's that stuff in it? I've actually thrown some magnesium in the water. So uh, magnesium has uh, some significant benefits as far as overall metabolism. It has blood pressure lowering effects and uh, uh, actually has been shown, magnesium intake shown to correlate with decreased risk of the development of diabetes. Most people not getting enough magnesium, especially if they're on water pills, diuretics. So um, actually, I just poured a little bit of milk of magnesia in there. You say, what? That's right. Pretty inexpensive magnesium supplement. Uh, don't drink too much of it or you'll uh, spend a fair amount of time in the bathroom because it's also a laxative if you get too much. But moderate amounts, magnesium uh, can be very beneficial. So whether it's pure water or whether you threw some magnesium in it like I did today, that is a powerful beverage. By the way, if you have kidney failure, don't add more magnesium. You can get into serious trouble. Just keep that in mind. We want to talk about the last element, exercising faith. In our book, 14th chapter, 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control, what was that 14th chapter entitled? I'm going to just turn there. I'm going to just read it, make sure my memory is correct. Actually, I know my memory is correct. But we uh, made it a question, exercising faith in God? Question mark. 
Now, some of you just hearing the name of God, you'll say, why are you putting this in a health video? We've been talking about stress management. We've been talking about social connections. Whether you're an atheist, an agnostic, whether you're a person that is uh, an adherent of one of the major religions in the world, we need to exercise faith in something. Faith is deteriorating. Confidence. Who, who can you trust? And I'd like to suggest to you that uh, there are some trustworthy sources today. And uh, I would encourage you to uh, to look out there for them, not just sources that go along with your preconceived ideas. I, I'm not going to editorialize in this presentation, but I think part of our problem is many of us are not listening to things that don't go along with our preconceived ideas, and that is not the way to get at what is truth. Let me tell you about my last resource. My last resource is a handout. It's, an, it's a detailed handout, number of pages that go through a number of these immune strategies that we've been talking about. It gives you even more detail, but it gives it to you from a stress management context and from this aspect of exercising faith. From someone who once described myself as an agnostic, someone who thought what was called the, the Holy Scriptures, just a bunch of stories, fairy tales, uh, uh, good lessons. I have come as a physician to believe that there's cutting-edge medical science that is supported by the ancient council in what people call the Holy Bible. So whether you think that's a holy book or not, that's not my point. In this handout, I look at something called the sanctuary system. It's a construct that basically presents a God very different than many religions present, even Christianity, even Judaism, uh, their so-called based on the book, right? Based on the, the Torah, the Old Testament, the New Testament, in the case of Christianity, as well as the Old. Here's my point. Get the free handout. You can get it free by going to compasshealth.net slash sanctuary. Compasshealth.net slash sanctuary. It goes through a framework where I show you that God tries to reveal himself in those holy scriptures as a God who wants to be close to people, not judging, not finding fault, not burning people up, but cares about people, wants to come close to them. And in the context of that sanctuary system, he actually embedded powerful health principles. A lot of scientific references there. If you don't like the Bible stuff, ignore that. But I think it's fascinating. And uh, I think it's worth uh, reading. It's my final free resource to you. So please take advantage of the things that we've talked about in this program. Implement the no pressure system. It's a powerful system that can help you improve your immune system, lower your blood pressure, decrease the problems you're having with your blood sugar. Free resources are out there for you. Look at the attached material. Evading Ebola, free book. I'm offering that to you. You can get my free 30-day lifestyle program, online videos that you watch over the course of 30 days. And by all means, get that free handout, the sanctuary handout that goes through powerful immune-enhancing principles and also shows you some biblical connections, interesting if nothing else. I'm Dr. David DeRose. If you enjoyed this video, like I said, one of the most powerful things you can do to connect with others is share. Tell them about this video. Like this video. That'll help the word get out to other people as well. And then when you talk about it, they can say, oh, I saw that as well. What did you think about X, Y, or Z? I'm doing this, that, or another thing. Make a difference in your life and in the lives of others. I'm Dr. David DeRose. Hopefully, this will make a difference for you and those that you love.